Many websites use technologies such as Flash and Ajax to interact with visitors. For example, some websites embed video players, games, and other interactive experiences on site pages. However, the basic web analytics model of tracking page views doesn't capture these kinds of interactions. This is because when a visitor interacts with a video player, for example, no page view is generated. Some other examples of interactions that don't generate page views are Ajax-based activities, file downloads, and clicks on links that take the visitor to another site. So, how do you track these kinds of activities? There are two ways, virtual page views and event tracking. You can create a virtual page view to represent practically any kind of activity or interaction you want. You simply call track page view and provide any name you want as the argument. It's virtual because you're telling Google Analytics to register a page view even though no new page has actually been loaded. You'll see these virtual page views alongside ordinary page views in the top content and content drill down reports. If you look at the Google Analytics tracking code, you'll notice that it calls track page view. This lets Google Analytics know that the browser has loaded a page. When you call track page view, however, you'll want to provide an argument that specifies a virtual page name for the event you're tracking. Here are some more examples. In the first example, we're tracking a download. In the second example, we're tracking a flash event. In each of these cases, we're simply calling track page view to register a virtual page view. It's a good idea to adopt a clear naming convention for your virtual page views. You might, for example, group virtual page views into categories by giving them a virtual subdirectory. Also, since virtual page views appear along with standard page views in reports, you may wish to create a duplicate profile where you filter out the virtual page views. To make this easy, you might organize all of your virtual page views into a virtual subdirectory. The other way to track non-page view interactions is to use event tracking. One advantage of using event tracking is that you won't generate an extra page view each time an interaction occurs. Another advantage is that you can easily organize your events into categories, actions, and provide labels and even values for each event you track. All of your events show up in the event tracking reports within the content section. Just call the track event method each time you want to register an event. The slide shows the full specification of track event, which you can also find documented on the Google Code site, and how you would actually call it, assuming that you're using asynchronous tracking. We'll discuss the arguments to track event in a minute. Here's an example of how you'd call track event from a flash video player. In this example, track event will get called each time the visitor releases the play button on the video player. Track event will register an event with a category name of videos and an action name of play, and a label of movie drama. Let's look at each of these arguments. The strings that you provide for the first three arguments, category, action, and label, govern how the events will be organized in your reports. So you'll want to think carefully about how you want to structure your events. Category is a name that you supply as a means to group objects, which are usually user interface elements that you want to track. So for example, if you have games and videos on your site, you'd probably want to have a games category and a videos category. The categories report in the event tracking section will show you all the user interface elements with which your visitors interacted. Action is the name you want to give to the type of interaction you're tracking. So for example, for videos, you'd probably want to track how many times your visitors pressed play. The actions report in the event tracking section will show you the interactions that occurred. The label argument is optional. A label allows you to provide additional information for the event you are tracking. For example, if you are tracking video plays, you might use the label argument to specify the name of the movie that was played. Or for file downloads, you might use it for the name of the file being downloaded. The labels report in the event tracking section will show you the labels of the events that occurred. Value is the fourth and optional argument to track event. Unlike the other arguments, which are all strings, Value is an integer. You can use it to assign a numeric value to a tracked page object. You'll then be able to see a sum total of these values in the event value column of your event tracking reports. You'll also be able to see an average of these values in the average column of your event tracking reports. So you might, for example, specify a dollar value when a specific playback marker is reached on your video player. 
To call track event without a value, simply omit the argument. In your reports, you'll notice that both total events and unique events are counted. Total events is simply the total number of times an event occurs. Really, it's just the number of times track event was called. But for unique events, each particular event is only counted once per visit. So if during a single visit, a visitor presses play five times on the same movie, total events will be incremented by five. But unique events will only be incremented by one, because for unique events, a particular event is only counted once per visit. As we mentioned earlier, the arguments you provide when you call track event will govern how events are organized in your reports. So before you add the calls to track event to your site, consider these best practices. First, determine in advance all the kinds of events you'll want to track. Try to create a hierarchy of categories, actions, and labels that will grow with your needs. Work with your report users to make sure that the hierarchy makes sense and use a clear, consistent naming convention for your categories, actions, and labels. Finally, note that a maximum of 500 events per visit will be tracked, so avoid tracking highly repetitive events such as mouse movements. Using track event allows you to analyze event-based interactions in much greater detail than is possible using virtual page views. For example, instead of just seeing how many times a movie was played on your site, you can analyze how people use your video player and see how different events correlate with site usage and e-commerce metrics. Also, by tracking events separately from page views, you won't inflate your page view count. 